Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Shri Ayer. Today is breaking news that Yevgeny Pergrosny, the chief of Wagner army, has been shot down in a plane uh, that is uh, supposedly flying from Moscow to St. Petersburg inside Russia. If the man is on the run, why he would be still in Russia is anyone's guess. So let's take a quick look at a slide deck that we have done where we are going to share you all the details that we have thus far. But before that, please like this video. And if you have not already subscribed to our channel, please do so. Let's take a look at a slide deck here, please. And this is the Wagner Army Chief Prigozhin. And Many people are saying now that he's dead. Yeah, in fact, uh, there is uh, a, a Telegram channel that is also saying that uh, he has been killed. And there so, some, some other people, the names are all given. So I'm going to give you all the details. Uh, next one, please. So Prigozhin started the Wagner Group, uh, a private military force that has aided Russian troops in not only Ukraine, but several parts of the world. It is believed that they were uh, being involved in many conflicts in Russia, um, I'm sorry, in uh, Africa also. In fact, some people say that this, the latest skirmish in Niger also may have uh, the Wagner army taking one side. So, the, the point that we need to understand is, looks like Russia had outsourced the fighting to Wagner army for some things where they wanted to have plausible deniability. What that means, I'll explain to you in just a moment. Let's go to the next slide, please. Wagner linked Telegram channel, Grey Zone, reported that the jet had been shot down by the Russian military, although it provided no evidence to support its claim. So till now, we don't have a missile with Russian uh, army markings hitting the plane. We don't have that. Uh, maybe there is something that, well, Putin may have had, I need the proof that this is being brought down. I don't know. So just jokes apart, that is uh, being confirmed by this Telegram channel. And the Russian Aviation Agency also has identified the passengers as Prigozhin and his right-hand man, Dmitry Utkin, Sergei Propustin, Yevgeny Makaryan, Alexander Totman, Valery Chekalov, and Nikolai Martsyev. The big question that comes to my mind is what were they doing in Russia? The last we heard, remember the coup that took place or the attempted coup that happened in June? was that he was going to be in Belarus because the Belarus president had mediated the terms and according to the mediation, the Wagner army was going to be completely absorbed into the Russian army and that uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin was going to get an honorable exit, an honorable out. That is how it was interpreted at that time. So what changed? So let's take a look at the next slide. So after that supposed deal happened, the CIA director had said in a statement, if I were Prigozhin, I would not fire my foot taster, meaning like he was a dead man walking. What a dead man walking is, somebody is alive, but death is imminent. That's what, uh, you know, William Burns was hinting there. And <laughs> there was a lot of other things that people have been saying now, not very kind. If it were ever to be proven that mid-air destruction of a plane carrying Yevgeny Prigozhin was an act of deliberate cold-blooded revenge by the Kremlin, this will go down in Russian history as the ultimate special military operation. What, what was the reason for this? Well, it is believed that Prigozhin was ticking off a lot of the upper bureaucracy, upper leadership in the Russian army, calling them names, but he stopped short of saying anything about Vladimir Putin, even though there were a few hints. Now, who is Vyavgeny Prigozhin? He was a former convict, he was a chef, and a hot dog salesman turned mercenary boss. He had a lot of admirers amongst the ranks of his Wagner mercenary army and beyond. Also, one of the things that was brought up when uh, that supposed coup was uh, being attempted was that this army had not been paid for a while. And again, the Belarus terms of settlement mentioned that all the back pay will also be paid and that there was a certain amount of money set aside for Prigozhin. In fact, if you remember, uh, the General Accounting Office in the United States suddenly said that $6 billion of the money given to Ukraine had gone missing. And they were all wondering where the heck did that $6 billion go? Then somebody else trotted out the theory that, oh, this was a payoff to Yevgeny Prigozhin 
to try and throw uh, Putin. Well, whether it was 6 billion that went to his bank accounts or not, unfortunately, the ban is dead now. So we would never know the answer to that. There was an alternate story that was doing the rounds that that money was actually paid off to congressmen and senators who voted for giving aid to Ukraine. Again, this is not going to come out so easily. In fact, they, they were saying that this money was being you know, distributed to everybody who voted because there were a lot of Republicans also who voted for giving aid to Ukraine. So we have to wait and see how that plays out. Uh, now, how will this affect the Russia-Ukraine conflict? Now, it is believed that Russia had used the Wagner army to do some things that they could prob probably disown. For example, one of the things that was done was the cruel treatment meted out to the Ukrainians who were captured. Russia has a theory, you know, they segregate any place they uh, capture in a war, they segregate it into two parts. Those who want to flee and those who want to remain and fight. That is, they'll ask the Ukrainians, okay, now you are captured. You guys decide. Those of you who want to flee, come this side. Those of you who want to stay and fight, this. Uh, those, those of you who want to stay, they won't say fight. Stay this side. So everybody, after making sure everybody had fled, whoever was left, they used to massacre them. Zaporizhia is one place where people are willing to, uh, they are waiting to go and look at what exactly is the kind of mayhem that has happened. Now, all those things, it is very possible that when the ceasefire terms are being agreed to, Russia might say, all this was not approved. It was Wagner army which did that. I'm just making it up here. But see, this is the plausible deniability. Meaning like, well, we asked them to go fight and occupy the areas. We didn't tell them to do this. In fact, there's a much worse story that is coming up. The men folk were killed. The women and the children, girls were all raped. And then the children were taken away to be indoctrinated to hate their own motherland, which is Ukraine. Now, this is a story that is still developing. It has legs on it. So we have to find out what is going to happen. Only United States, in fact, some senators and congressmen are the only ones who are talking about it. If you had seen the Republican debate today, you would have seen mention of this. So we have to wait and see how that part is going to play out. Now, this also begs the question, what is going to happen to all the operations in Africa? And don't you think this is coincidental or you find it a bit of a coincidence that two days after a Russian submarine goes missing off of the coast of Taiwan, this happens here? Is somebody like, you know, tying up some loose ends here? Is that what is happening? We'll never know because all these are under the dark operation, dark ops they call them and you will never know the truth. But one can always come up with some sort of a theory saying that, well, maybe the United States is trying to clean up or, or trying to force Russia to come to a ceasefire and, and agree some, to some terms that will, um, you know, will be palatable to the West to claim victory because Biden needs a victory. Otherwise, he's in trouble. 100%, I can tell you that. And, and so the 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 uh, russian sub could be collateral damage i'm sorry the chinese sub could be collateral damage to tell china don't put your nose into the russian ukraine conflict because it is believed that the us had told china not to export anything but china has been continuing to do so so this is this is what is the uh, you know the uh, reading between the lines is going on now all this now tells us that some point of a, a critical inflection is coming up because of the uh, upcoming elections, which is still about a year again, year, year away. But what happens is the narrative is being set today. In fact, those of you who have time do go and watch the Republican debate because it, it felt to me that everyone was ganging up against Vivek Ramaswamy and, and he was practically, you know, being pulled in by just about every speaker across, uh, around, uh, on the aisle. I mean, on, on the debate panel, everybody seemed to be pulling him into their uh, conversations, taking jabs at him and so on and so forth. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. So uh, one more slide I have, uh, and then we have also got a video that shows the crash. So this is the flight of the, uh, the plane that went from Moscow to St. Petersburg, and the plane is believed to have been crashed near Kuzenkino, and this is in Ivor Oblast. And, and we have a video that we want to share with you. Can we have the video, please?
you can see the trail there contrail Пиздец, это беспилотник. Сбили, бабахнуло в два раза в заболоте. You can see it falling here. You can see it falling. Falling, falling. Now it's finally crashed. Где, блядь, бабахнет? Куда упал? Вон тут куски летят. Где-то, блядь, упал. Хуя дым пошел какой. А там он куски летят еще. Смотри, какой клуб поднимается. Пиздец. Меня аж трясет. Хуеть. Где это? Блять, не видать нихуя. Вон. Около фермы. Горим. Не пойму, у фермы нет. So there are other uh, close-ups of this particular place of the crash, but at least this video shows you the fall right from uh, the time it was in the sky. So um, this is where we stop now, and there will be a lot of questions that will be asked by people. What happens to the uh, uh, Russian-Ukrainian conflict and uh, many things here. Remember that Putin had stayed away from the BRIC summit because he was afraid that he might be imprisoned for an international court that ordered him arrested for the thing that I mentioned about the indoctrination of children captured in Ukraine. So this is see this is these are all things that are happening you know in very very quick time and we have to wait and see how the dust settles and where chips may fall so that's all i have for now and and if there are any questions i'd like to uh, answer those now niranjan p wants to know maybe you already know this for information on cn you can also refer to refer to what I, I, I don't know, it's incomplete, Niranjan. Uh, one other thing, now today on CNN, I also read about the missing nuclear submarine in China. So it's now beginning to hit the mainstream. How convenient for Putin, all his opposition and opponents, yes, Navalny is very, very sick still. And, and that's the last guy, poor guy, I don't know, I hope he survives. They do all kinds of, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Sandhya Rajgopalan says CMI, CIA might as well claim responsibility. It is not in the habit of any intelligence agency to claim responsibility. No. Yes, Putin doesn't tolerate disloyalty. You're right. Stone, Stone, Stone says that Vivek speaks very well and has good intentions, but he has no clue about how ruthless and corrupt the deep state is. Just ask JFK. Oh, wait, they got it. Well, you're right, Stone. Um, somebody had to say it. Somebody had to bell the cat. Somebody had to set the narrative. I'm pleased that Vivek is asking all the tough questions. And in fact, he says that he is completely against the United States giving any more aid to Ukraine, for which everybody else jumped on him. I think DeSantis also said the same thing. So you are slowly seeing DeSantis and Vivek G. Ramaswamy on one side, the remaining pack on the other side. We are not even talking about Trump, who supposedly is live now on Twitter. And he's having his own one-on-one -on -one conversation. So you can see that uh, and, and to understand where Trump stands on all these things. Kaab Bhushundi, uh, dear CIR, do we expect a self-proclaimed humanitarians come left liberals in India to start howling over this? I don't think so. This is too fast for them. They need to be having a toolkit. Somebody will have to give the toolkit because there are too many missing, there are too many moving pieces here, guys. Who's good? Who's bad? Who's good pretending to be bad? Who's bad pretending to be good? Who's good pretending to be, pretending to be good? Who's bad pretending to be bad? And every other flavor that you can think of in between all these things. So we don't know. So we'll have to wait for the toolkit. I'm sure 
toolkit is being prepared it will be by one other indian sepoy who will be slaving away somewhere thinking about all these things who knows he might also be watching this particular video uh stone wants to know if icj arrest any american america will invade the hague what's up with that i don't think so um <laughs> it, it us also has always made sure that the icj never you know condemns any one of their own but then you saw that uh, the wikileaks guy assange has been brought back to united states to stand trial uh, it, it's a it's a mix back but us does act like a boss around everybody else next question please manov san wants to know could putin's absence from south africa be south africa be also related to prigozhin's accident did he perhaps feel a need to stay near home to manage the fallout no i don't think so manov san i think it was maybe it was one of the reasons but i think he the i think south africa said they couldn't guarantee that they would not arrest putin so it is a double negative right so that's i think the reason why he felt that why take a chance and you know get embarrassed on foreign land let me just address this thing from online so next question please anshuman singh says how is biden still competing with trump for next election despite his health and mental issues are people not seeing it uh we have come a long ways from expecting the american president to be hale and hearty and morally faithful uh, those things have all gone fallen by the wayside and and what has happened biden has been deemed unfit to be president for a long time now two years and counting what has happened nothing next question please atul khilari wants to know the wagner head of africa was also changed before this happened you know atul the thing is when there is some sort of a negotiated settlement between the two parties Uh, things will change i mean if if it really the 6 billion came, went into prigozhin's pocket one wonders why he had, he had to go back to russia i would have you know even if i had a, a fraction of that amount i would find a nice island uh, you know where there is no extradition treaty with anybody and just go and settle down there like like you know the smirch of james bond or doctor no or something like that so i don't know i i, I find all that stuff a little bit incredulous as to why he even went or why he even went from moscow to st petersburg it's it's a bit of big big mystery to me rahul kaul says sir so much happening around the world there are ominous these are ominous signs what in your view can possibly happen in the next few years i don't see any good coming out of this see what is happening is that it all started in my opinion with the united states unconditionally pulling out of afghanistan leaving all their arms behind but uh, you know they had disabled most of them so this is where things started i think us just said i have had enough i am going today now because it is believed that the united states was putting the pay payroll of the afghanistan government uh, paying all the army all of the army all of the other forces and the government everything How long can the uh, can a country keep doing this? Two thousand one is when uh, U.S. went into uh, Afghanistan. It was a lot of money, lot of money. So that was one of the reasons that it's it's a, it's it's a graveyard. Nothing can be done. Let's just go, cut our losses and go. So I think that's where things started unraveling. We'll have to wait for some more time before things settle down. I think what we are now headed for is bilateralism more than a global economy where countries will trade amongst each other with that what happens is pricing also gets a little bit different when globalism was there what used to happen was uh, let's say if um, if uh, germany wanted 10000 pieces of leather jackets right the tender could go to many countries in the far east Uh, india uh, south korea malaysia indonesia and so on bangladesh and so on and so forth then whoever bid the lowest price in this case euros got the contract now then you had to scratch and make sure that india's exchange rate with the with the euro was competitive enough if not go and ask the government for some kind of a, a, a cut in taxes some kind of a you know Uh, incentive so that india still can make the bid and so on and so forth but now with bilateral trade what can be done is 
Germany can uh, pay for India's stuff in rupees. You don't need to worry about uh, what your competitiveness is. It is more about one country wanting to deal with another country. So these, but the competition will be two companies within India who will want to get the best price so that uh, so that they get the deal, right? So these kinds of things are going to happen. So this is a new world order emerging. And the most interesting thing here is, I think only top four countries can be the policemen for the rest of the world because you need to have a very robust navy. 79% uh, of the world is water and, and that's what is going to dictate who's going to win these things, who's going to be the one everybody will listen to. Next question, please. Krishna Aital wants to know, uh, I think we have to wait for dust to settle before we say Putin, Russia committed atrocities on Ukrainian soldiers and civilians. I will not be surprised if it is propaganda by the West. Uh, why do you think the ICJ would rule the way they did? I, I think there is a little bit more truth to it. I will find out. Okay, I have a lot of friends in Ukraine as well as people who are neutral who are looking at it like the way I am looking at it and I will find out some answers. I will give some follow-up video talks where I'll be able to del dwell on this in, in more depth. Next question, please. Kushanand Keshava wants to know, Namaskar from Bay Area. Sir, would Trump be even allowed to contest the elections? A very good question. Uh, the Democrats are so afraid of him that they might even try to see if they can debar him from even contesting. Monofsan again, uh, should Modi change his media team who put his face up next to Chandrayaan 3 lander during moon landing? It looked a little too self-promotional. Well, uh, people will go overboard. Just think this way. If it had succeeded, Modi is going to claim credit. And if it had failed, then would, wouldn't everybody have said, oh, Modi ka kaam hai, sir? So this, is, this has got its pluses and minuses. Next one, please. Stone wants to know, has the deep state already dumped down America so much that they just don't see the problems plaguing America? Woke America is dying and yet they are blind. Woke America is not dying. It is, it is actually trying to you know, assert itself, especially in states like California and Washington on the West Coast and, and Oregon. And this is where the fight back will start. It has already started in California. Watch out for that one case, Cisco versus the state of California. That's the one that's going to see where the fight back is going to come. Next question, please. Sanat Kolhatkar wants to know, will Russia retaliate for its strategic assets like submarine Nord Stream being damaged by USA? Well, we have to wait and see what happens. Russia is quite weak militarily right now. And if the message given to China about that submarine is a message that you know, you keep exporting to Russia, this is what's going to happen, uh, China will stop. Remember that Xi Jinping did not give his scheduled speech. It, his Minister of Commerce did uh, gave it instead. He wasn't, even, he wasn't even there for the dinner. So some things are happening in China too. And this is a day before all these things happen. So wait till the uh, chips fall. Anshuman Singh wants to know, sir, just share the channel with 10 people and would ask everyone to do for the next 1 million gold. Also, would love to have more guests from perspective of states like Bihar, Jharkhand, Orissa and the Northeast. Northeast, we have done a lot of justice. You are right about Bihar, Jharkhand and Orissa and we will have some guests come on our channel. Thanks for letting us know. AK wants to know, uh, I think that's it for now. Uh, that might have been just an observation. That's it for now. Thanks once again for watching, guys. Please help us grow to 1 million subscriber mark. We kind of slowed down this month because I think there was some sort of a regulation in internet in India and many people couldn't watch many of our videos. I'm hoping that business will resume once the G20 summit finishes on the 9th of September and life will be back on an even keel. Looking forward to hearing from all of you. Please do weigh in by way of comments and also if you have not subscribed to our channel do subscribe and sometimes these are two together subscription and bell notification do select both thanks once again namaskar